prepping the hearing in March of this year, actually the court sort of touched upon this issue because the council has, has argued uh, several times stay, saying, well, you know, look at the FARC. We took the FARC off the list once there was a peace agreement. And the court actually asked the council and said, look, but a peace is, does that mean that an organization can only be taken off the list once the peace agreement is there? Uh, because, you know, to get a peace agreement, you need to, two sides to, to cooperate, you know, and, and is it fair to sort of um, always say, well, we will take you off the list once there is a peace agreement when actually maybe Turkey won't go into negotiations. And when, you know, when that offers you know, one of the parties a, a, an incentive in a way not to come to the table because they know that as long as they don't, they're not part of the, the discussion, the other party will commit, will remain on the terrorism list. And um, so I do think that there is some um, discussion about it. I, I think there are many aspects that play a role. Obviously, it could be, it could have to do with, with, with political um, uh, developments and the importance of certain relationships that need to be upheld. But I think it's also true that the council um, is very, well, the council is struggling, I think, in deciding when to take an organization off the list. Once you've put them on, you know, wh when are you going to say, well, we no longer consider you a terrorist organization? Because for 20 years you've said we are, and then when are you going to say no longer? Important here is that the council has made this decision to argue that any um, attacks of the PKK on soldiers or military personnel is a terrorist attack. Um, and we've, of course, argued that that is incorrect, that that is part of the internal armed conflict and that you can't decide that that is a terrorist attack. Um, however, um, the council takes that position and if you take that position, well, then clearly, given the volatile situation in, in, in Kurdistan, you know, you're going to find evidence or incidents of that kind, you know, of clashes. I mean, that's what's happening. There, there's, there's clashes taking place. Um, so they will argue, well, you know, there continue to be incidents, there continue to be clashes, and we consider those as terrorist attacks. So, you know, that is why we want to keep the organization on the list. And that is why... I think it is very important to sort of get a decision on whether or not such clashes can be considered terrorism. Because, you know, if the court now finds that they are to be considered terrorism, then you have to go back to the, to the legislator and say, look, is this truly what you want to, 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 to consider as terrorism? You know, then that is the law truly, uh, you know, the law is wrong. But if the court says, well, this is not sufficient to consider as terrorism, well, then obviously you can ask the council to, to take organization off the list and say basically, well, you know, you were wrong in deciding that those are terrorist attacks. This touches on, on many issues that have to do with anti, uh, with, with anti counter terrorism legislation. Um, and I think what you see here is that it's a very political decision to list an organization, but they have made it into a legal decision. Um, and, and you get this place where political and legal spheres sort of run through each other. Um, and I think that, that this case really uh, um, exemplifies that, that, you know, you can only describe a political situation in legal terms up to a certain point. And by trying to, to do that, you, you know, I feel that you are playing in the hands of a country like Turkey that, that sort of uses lawfare to sort of, you know, abuse the law and abuse anti-terrorism legislation to, you know, really repress a lot of people. And, and you're playing into their hands by, in essence, allowing for similar um, legal uh, systems to take place within Europe. Um, and and I'm, I'm not saying that the European Union is, is using it the same way as Turkey, obviously it's not, but it is making vague anti-terrorism legislation. And once your own anti-terrorism legislation is very vague, it offers an, an excuse for other countries to do the same. Um, so I think it's important that we try to get that established within the European Union, if only so we can use that as a sh sharper argument against, for example, Turkish government to say, look, 
the way you are abusing anti-terrorism legislation is wrong and you you are you are misusing that 